Hi, this is Martin Van Buren from Getting Stuff Done and in this video we're going to be talking about solenoid valves for your irrigation system and how you can set up a system like this. I'm going to be talking through all of the components that make up this system, uh, but the wiring and setting up the timer, we'll do that in the next video. So let's jump straight in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run you through how to set up a, a water solenoid system. I'm using the Kleber solenoid valves. The general idea with these is You've got a basic flow in, flow out with an electrical component that controls a valve to open and close and let the water out to, in my case, be able to use pop-up sprinklers for my irrigation system. Now how these work is my solenoid valve will be connected at the other end to a timer like this. This particular timer controls eight zones. I'm going to use five zones on my system. And then also we connect a rain sensor like this to be able to override the timer if it's raining because we don't want to be um, irrigating when, when it's raining, wasting water. So the actual electrical components and how you wire this up, we use these little uh, gel connectors because there's a lot of uh, moisture on the ground where these solenoids are going to be but the actual setup of how to connect them I'll show you that in another video. For today, so we'll put that aside and I'm going to put this electrical component aside for now. What we're going to do today is I'm going to talk you through how to actually set up all of your solenoids and all the co different components that you need in order to do that. So what we'll start with is the water source. So behind me over here is a underground 3,400 litre water tank. Uh, that water is sourced from the, it just runs off the roofs into that, that system through filters. There's another video of how you set that up. From there, I've got a 25 millimeter MDPE pipe, which will run from my pump. I've got a um, pressure pump that will bring the water on. So the moment the valve opens, there's a call on the pump effectively. The pump switches on and pushes the water through. Right, so the reason I use 25 millimeters, I'm trying to get the maximum amount of water to my valves. Uh, you can also use 20 millimeters, but I just want to get the maximum amount. I'm running quite a lot of things and I've also got a live uh, 25 millimeter that goes to taps. I'll talk you through that in a second. Just remember when you're setting up your system, the pressure in your system is going to determine the size of the pipes that you're going to use and the number of solenoid valves. And, and obviously the number of solenoid valves is each one for a different zone. If you've got running from mains, you might not have as much pressure and it's probably better to, see, to do a smaller system, maybe something like a 16 millimeter uh, pipe or something like that. You can look at something like the Kleber, uh, Calibri is a, is, a, is a great starter kit that is easier to set up. And then once you've got your initial system, you can then quickly work out how much more either solenoid valves or zones you need to run that system. Right, so at the very basic, what we're trying to do is we've got our water source coming in. We use these little uh, inlets to just strengthen. You put these in inside the pipe. I've already got one in here just to strengthen the connectors and, and just uh, reduce the chance that the connectors actually leak. And then we're going to be connecting something like uh, this little MDP connector onto the pipe on this side. And then you're effectively trying to get into the valve. So um, on mine, ideally what you need is a female connector like this, which will run there, go into your solenoid valve. And at the other end, I will have, again, a little uh, step down, because this is one inch, 25 millimeters, which will step down to a 20 millimeter, which is going to be my irrigation system at the other end with my, my pop-up sprinkler. So what happens is when the valve turns on, the water will come through here and it'll turn on my uh, sprinkler system. It's the timer that drives the whole system. In reality, what you would have is where this pipe comes out, you might have little connectors like this, where you have a sprinkler going on to the next one, which might be another one there with, a, with another, and you'd have a series of sprinklers like that. The last one, uh, if you were diverting off, you might use a, an elbow like that um, to connect another sprinkler further off the system. I've got some videos of how you set all of that up. Nice little tip, at the end of your system, you always want to put one of these little valves on the end of each of your zones. And what that does is 
when the valve closes and the pressure drops, the, the valve here will effectively open and let some of the water out. And the reason you want to do that is because in winter, you don't want your whole system to be full of water and if the water ices and the, and, and the, 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 the ice expands, it can damage and crack your pipes and, and, and break your system. So this is a great way of allowing the water just to drip out when the valves have closed. So that's a handy tip for you on that one. Now that's the very basic, if you were setting up one valve, that's effectively what you're trying to get to. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna connect multiple valves. So what we would do is we would start with our one inch male fitting there. We would then go into a little T fitting like this. This is part of the uh, Faber's system. So they actually sell these in little, uh, you can purchase them like that. This has got a, a female, female and a male connector. And what we do then is we're effectively building a series like this where we would connect one here. We would then have our, our uh, solenoid valve, I hope you can see from there. So we'd have, let's say our pipe was coming in from this side. You would have your first one teeing off here with your little female connector there, which steps that down to my 20 millimeter pipe. And at the other end, that's the pipe that would go out to all of my sprinkler systems. Again, I use these little uh, 25 millimeters. Now I can actually show you on here. That just goes inside the pipe there. And when you actually do your connectors, you don't need to take them all the way out. You can just half slide them like that, push that in like that, and then push and you'll feel it go in and then tighten that up. And then your sprinklers can go on the top like that. Uh, what you do is for these, uh, if you get something like these plumbers, uh, that is a great plumbers uh, pliers. These are great to be able to just make those connections so you don't hurt your hands while you're doing all of that. Right, let's get back to the solenoid valves. So we've connected our first one like that. Then we will have another T going off like that with this next solenoid valve there and the step down to the 20 mil. And then I can literally just keep going as many as I need, depending on how many zones I've got. I've got five. Whereas let's say I just wanted to add one more. You just end up with a with an elbow at the end and you put your last solenoid on the end there. Uh, if it's a male to female fitting, you might need something like that, which can just change uh, the connectors. If I wanted to add more, I can just add another T, put my solenoid valve, another one, and then at the end, I would put my little elbow, which will be my, the last. And I'm actually gonna do five like this, so it'll end up looking something like this, and each of these will have a little connector like that going off to for my, my system. Then the wiring will run from each of these valves, they'll all be connected through, and that'll run up to the timer. So really, that is basically the setup. Now, I've got one little tweak here, is when I've got my valves like this, and I've got my line coming in, so I actually want to have one of these live before it goes to the solenoid valves. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna add a T on here where my live line comes in. There's no valve going off on this one. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna continue this circuit on here and put a tap. So this will be a little fitting which you can mount onto a wall. Your pipe comes in underneath here like that and you can put a little uh, little tap here. So that on my circuit, if ever I want to do some uh, plug in a sprayer or just plug in a hose pipe or whatever it is, I can just connect a pipe here, open my tap. The moment I open that tap, that acts the same as what these solenoids would have dealt, done. There's a, there's a drop in the pressure in the system because this is running live on this line here. It's almost the same as if you just, you know, if you'd connected that live here and you open the tap, there will be a pull on the system, the pump will switch on, and then I can just plug my hose in and do whatever I want to do. What I'm doing now is I'm adding the solenoids in there by doing it like this. So I can have a live tap at any time, and actually you can have as many as you want. I'm actually doing, I think, five taps all over the garden, which is connected to this live system, so it'll just carry on here using more of these T's and uh, carrying on from there. But for my, my five sprinkler systems, where the live uh, supply comes in here, these are effectively little taps that will open and close, and it's the timer that 
opens and closes these, uh, say, two or three o'clock in the morning or whenever it is best to irrigate, depending on if I'm doing the flowers or, or the grass. It's quite handy to separate uh, your sprinklers on the grass and those in the flowers because you might want to irrigate your flowers more than say, than, say, your grass, for example. And then at the end of each of these valves, as I mentioned, uh, each of these solenoids, as I mentioned, I will have one of these after you've done all the sprinklers which allows when this turns off if any of these turn off that water is allowed to then just drip out of that that circuit so that it doesn't freeze that is basically a solenoid system or what you need to do to to set all of that up you can find links to the products we've used in this video in the description below now when you're making your connections with plastic fittings you don't actually have to use teflon or plumber's tape uh, it's my understanding that that adds more strain or stress. If you're using the connectors from Kleber, they'll have little red bits inside. Make sure you take those out so you don't actually put the connections in. The water's not going to get through. They're just there to protect the fittings. Maybe another little handy tip. Each of my zones is actually color coded. So I grab like um, this electric tape and I actually put that around the pipes, just uh, literally around each of the pipes. And as the zones have gone to the different areas, periodically underground, I've put tape on, so I know at any point if I had to dig up any parts of it, because they color coded back to the source, I know exactly where, which each, where each zone goes, and uh, it's easier to maintain the system. Quick other thing is if you're cutting uh, your pipes, something like this is quite handy, where you can just have a little pipe cutter. They're really, really worth investing in. Really simple to be able to cut your pipes. If you if you don't have something like that, pair of secateurs, they work just as well. Now the last thing is my solenoid valves. I keep it in a, a box like this just to protect it from the elements. Gives it a little bit of extra protection also from any animals or things that want to come and chew the wires or anything like that. That's it, what I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, make sure you click the like button. Uh, make sure you subscribe so you can see some of our other videos and uh, we will see you next time.